Hi guys, you welcome to the channel. I am Selassie Travis back with another video. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sew a pant with a continuous elasticated waistband. Now the pattern I'm working with is drafted using the slack foundation. The leg line design of this pant is a wide leg line. Um, most people would call this style of pant a palazzo, but I wouldn't because I think a palazzo has a wider leg line than this pattern I'm working with. So the wideness of this leg line is more on the average side. It is not as wide as a palazzo. So I wouldn't call the style of pants a palazzo. Anywho, this is just my opinion. So feel free to call the style of pant whatever you will. Okay. Now from the top to the crotch line is the foundation of the pant. Why from the crotch line to the M line is the leg line of the pant. So right now I'm going to move to the foundation of the pant and tell you what I have here. Let's focus on the foundation for a moment. This pant pattern has a continuous elasticated waistband. When I say a continuous waistband, I mean the waistband is already attached to the pattern. Okay, so um, the waistband is not going to be a separate waistband. It is already drafted together with the pant. Now, the width of my continuous waistband is one and three quarter inches. Okay, um, so from this line to this line is the band width of one and three quarter inches. Why from this line to this line is the facing of the band, which is another one and three quarter inches. Why from this line to the top of the pant is half of an inch seam allowance. Okay. Mind you, I've already added my seam allowance all around this pattern. I added half of an inch to the waistline, to the center front, to the side seam, to the inseam, and then I added one inch M allowance to the M of the pant. The fabric I'm working with is a lightweight crepe, and I'll be using about two yards for the construction of this pant. Now the texture of this fabric feels like a chiffon, but it's not as thin and transparent as a chiffon. I'm going to carefully put my fabric on fold, right side facing right side, and then I'll bring in my pant pattern. This is the front piece. And then I'll carefully place it on the fabric and carefully cut out this pattern. Okay. When you're working with a lightweight fabric like this, you want to make sure you use some weights on it or if possible, pin your pattern to the fabric before you cut it out. All right, next, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the back piece as well. Before I start sewing, I'm going to pin the pieces together. So I'm going to start with the left hand side of the pant. I have the left hand side of the back piece already on the table. And then I'm going to bring in the left hand side of the front piece with right side facing the right side. I'm going to pin both pieces together at the crotch point like this. Okay. Next, I'm going to move them words and pin both pieces at the M like so. Okay. Next, I'm going to stretch the pieces at both end and then pin the middle of the inseam. And then I'm going to work my way from the middle upwards and then work my way from the middle downwards. So one of the reasons I'm stretching the fabric when pinning, especially at the inseam, is because the distance from the crotch point to the M of the back piece is five eighths of an inch shorter than that of the front piece. That is, I'm talking about the inseam of the front piece. So in order to create a balance, you don't want the, the front piece kind of, you know, longer than the back piece when you're sewing. So you want to stretch the back piece to, you know, blend with the front piece. So like I did on the inseam, I'm going to start pinning from the top of the out seam and then move to the M and then I am going to carefully pin the out seam of the pant. So your out seam of both the front and the back pattern should be balanced. 
So the outseam of the front and the back should be balanced on your pattern. It is only the inseam of the back piece that should be at least half of an inch to like five eighths of an inch shorter than that of the inseam of the front. Okay. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and pin the right hand side of the pants. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and join the pieces together. Okay. Now it's time to start sewing the pieces. So I'm going to carefully sew this piece with the half inch seam allowance, which I added to the side seam as well as the inseam. So make sure you are sewing with the seam allowance you added to your pattern. Okay. on a long pen here. Maybe I'll go show my face. So, oh, you keep me round and coming for more. Tell me what is wrong with me. See, as you did make me single, you put a spell on me. You're my controller. I really want to rock with you every night. My body go down for you every time. I really want Every time, every time I no go ever replace you No more game, I go embrace you You know say I go the faithful Faithful, faithful Next, I'm going to take this to my seizure and then finish the raw edge of both the out seam and the in seam once i'm done with this i'm going to take this to my ironing table and carefully press open all the seam i've sewn okay so you want to give it a good press and you should have something like this so sorry i can't really take you through the process of me pressing the pants but this is what it should look like after you're done pressing so next i'm going to bring in the right hand side of the pants which is already sewn as well and pressed just like the left hand side and then i'm going to join both pieces together at the crotch point. You want to make sure you pin both pieces to be properly aligned exactly along the seam, okay? And then I'm going to carefully work my way from the crotch point to the waistline of the back piece and then work my way from the crotch point to the waistline of the front piece. Once I'm done pinning the crotch of the pant, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just run a stitch around the crotch. Okay? So after joining both parts of the pant along the crotch area, the next thing I'm going to do is to fold in the M of the pants. Okay. So I added one inch M allowance to the pattern and I'm going to do a double fold of half of an inch, which is going to equal the one inch M allowance I added to the M. Okay. So I'm going to carefully do a double fold of half of an inch like so, and then I'm just going to pin the starting point. I'm only pinning the starting points because I can handle, you know, sewing the M without pinning all the way through. But if you are not sure of getting this right, I would advise you pin all around the hem before you start sewing, you know, just to guarantee a clean finish. Okay. See, I see that confuse me. Your beauty don't capture me. Yeah. Got me calling, calling, running for more. I really want to rock with you every night My body go down for you every time I really want to rock with you every night Every time, every time I no go ever replace you No more game, I go embrace you You know say I go to faithful Faithful, faithful The way you 
turn me on, turn me on. I like the way you turn me on, the way you turn me on, turn me on, yeah. The way you turn me on, turn me on. Next, it's time to sew the continuous waistband. Now, from the top, I'm going to mark down two and quarter inches and then fold the pants at this point and then give this a good press. So I'm doing this in order to create a crease, which will be a guide just to let me know where my waistband begins. Okay. So this crease line is the actual um, top of the continuous waistband. So the two and quarter inches I folded into the pant to create the crease line around the waist of the pant is the facing plus half of an inch seam allowance. Okay. Now I'm going to fold in half of an inch from the facing and then fold over one and three quarter inches. So that one and three quarter inches should fall on that crease line I created initially. So once this is done, I'm going to take the measurement at this point. Once I'm sure it is one and three quarter inches, I'm going to pin it down. So I started at the center front. Next, I am going to go to the side seam and repeat the same process. First of all, fold in half of an inch like so, and then fold over one and three quarter inches, which is the width of my facing. And just to double check, I'm going to take the measurement. Okay, it's accurate. Then I'm going to pin it down. I am going to go to the next seam, which is the center back, and then fold in half of an inch, and then fold again one and three quarter inches. Double check the measurement and then pin in place. Next, I'm going to repeat the same process on the last seam which is the side seam fold in half of an inch like so then fold in one and three quarter of an inch double check to make sure the measurement is accurate and then pin in place so now that the four corners are pinned down it's going to be easier for me to pin the rest part of the waistband now I'm going to lay my pant flat on the table and then fold in half of an inch and then fold again one and three quarter inches. Take the measurement to make sure it is accurate and then pin it in place. So I'm going to repeat the same process all around the waistband until I get to the very end. So once I'm done pinning the waistband down, I am going to take this to the ironing table and give it a good press before sewing. Now the width of the elastic band I'm working with is one and a half inches wide. Okay. For the length of the elastic band, you need to subtract two inches from your waist circumference. Take for example, if your waist is 28 inches, you subtract two inches, this becomes 26 inches. So the width of your finished band should be 26 inches, but do make sure you add an extra one inch as your seam allowance to the band. So 26 inches plus one inch becomes 27 inches. So this should be the length of your elastic band. Okay. So I am done sewing all around the waistband and this is what it looks like. Okay. But, um, when sewing, you want to leave a tiny opening, maybe somewhere close to the side seam. So this is the opening through which your, um, elastic band, we go through into the pants. Okay. So now I'm going to use a safety pin and carefully slide this elastic band into the pant. So when you're almost at the end of the elastic, you want to pin both edge together with your safety pin 
and then carefully arrange the band inside the waistband okay you want to carefully um, adjust the elastic band inside the continuous waistband so once you done with this take off the pin and place both edge of the waistband on top of each other like so with the same allowance you added and then you want to run a stitch through so after securing both end of the elastic waistband i went ahead and i closed that opening i created on the waistband and i also went ahead to give the pant a good press so this is what i have right here and here guys we've come to the end of this video and i am sure you'd like to see how this pant looks on me but the thing here is that I made this outfit for a client who fortunately happens to be my friend. So I guess she wouldn't mind me trying out our clothes because we are very close. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to quickly throw this on and come back to show you what it looks like. I want a better one to hold you tight. Let me be the one who treat you right. But you want a spot, let me see your light. Yeah, yeah. Let me be the one who take your time Tell you what I do when the feeling's right Make you a better man Won't you let me call you Let you know I want you Place no one above you Would you let me call you Let you know I want you Place no one above Would you let me call Would you let me text you Wanna be next?